Combining events and probability. Um, not that hard, but sometimes it can be tricky when you look at it for the first time. So when we're combining events, we're thinking about things that happen together. So for instance, getting um, a heads and another heads, or rolling a six and a three on the dice. So two things that are happening together. Um, the probability of both event A and event B happening is found by multiplying. So when you're trying to find two things together, we end up timesing or multiplying them together. So if you know the probability of the first thing happening, you just times it by the second thing that's going to happen. And this works on one condition that they're what we call independent, which you'll learn more about at level three, but basically we're saying that they, they don't influence each other. The fact that A has happened won't change whether B happens or not. So as an example, what is the probability that you get three heads in a row if you toss a coin three times? Well, that's a head, and a head, and a head, and we can think about, well, what's the probability of getting one head? That's 0 0.5. So it's the same for all of these. If I flip a coin, it should be independent. I get a half chance of getting a head on the first try. I'll still have a half chance on the second try, and I'll still have a half chance on the third try. So the probability of getting three heads in a row is just timesing those probability of each of those together. So the probability of the head for the first one times the probability of heads for the second times the probability of heads for the third, and we get 0 0.125. So again, they shouldn't have any influence on each other. The fact that I get a head on the first time doesn't really change whether I get the head the second or the third time. And in this case, because it's the same event, like flipping a coin, it's the same probability all three times. Looking at the next problem, what is the probability that you flip a coin and get a head, heads, and roll a dice and get a three? So we flip a coin and get a heads, and then I'm going to roll a dice and get a three. So a head and a three. Well, what's the probability of getting a head? Again, we said that that was a half. And the probability of getting a 3 when you roll a dice, well, that's 1 out of 6. So, if I'm hoping to get both of these things happen together, I just times those probabilities together. So that's 0 0.5 times 1 over 6. You can change those to decimal if you like. And you should get 1 twelfth, or 0 0.0833. And that's 833 repeating. So again, two different events with different probabilities, but if I want them to happen together, I times those probabilities, the individual probabilities, together. So half for the tail, sorry, half for the head, and one out of six for the three on the dice. The probability that Anna succeeds with a goal shot is 0 0.8. What is the probability she gets three goal shots on her next three shots? So again, that's the probability that she scores, times the probability that she scores, times the probability that she scores. So here, 0 0.8 times 0 0.8 times 0 0.8. And if we put that into the calculator, we should get 0 0.512. So she has a 0 0.512 chance of scoring her next three goal shots in a row. So just remember when you're looking to do combined events or more than one thing happening, you can, if you're wanting them to happen together or in a sequence with each other, just times those individual probabilities together. So just be careful whether it's the same thing three times in a row or a mix-up of two different types of events or more than that possibly.